Hi, I'm Kevin Kodama, and I'm the Senior Service Hydrologist here at the Honolulu Forecast Office. And what I would like to talk to you today in this short video is about our new flash flood warning format, which is in the impact-based format for the National Weather Service. And in this video, I'll cover a brief overview of the changes to our format, why we're making the change, and then provide some examples of the new format with the different levels as they apply to Hawaii heavy rain events. So as far as this new format, uh, on, on November 13th, we implemented here at the Honolulu Forecast Office this new impact-based warning format or IBW format. And this is a national change. It's not something that we just generated locally. And the new format hopes to make it easier to identify the most valuable information that we're putting out in the flash flood warning. And then hopefully it'll enable us to highlight the most dangerous flash flood warning events. What we'll be including is specific hazard source and impact information in clearly defined sections of the warning. And we'll be using machine readable tags to enable the expression of different flood impact levels. And then there will also be changes to the wireless emergency alerts or your well, mobile phone alerts that, that you hear from time to time when we issue warnings. And we'll be activating these only during those events that require immediate life-saving action. Implementation of the wireless emergency alert change will take place on or after December 16th, 2019. And keep in mind that the emergency alert system activations will remain unchanged for TV banners and radio cut-ins. The machine readable tags will enable the weather service to express different levels of flood impacts. Starting with the base or the base level event, which will actually have no tag, this will involve most flash flood warnings. Uh, for more serious situations, we'll be including what's called the considerable tag. And these will be for flash flood events of unusual severity and impacts where urgent action will be needed. And for the most serious events, we'll attach a catastrophic tag. And these are for exceedingly rare and very violent flash floods, which will have very significant impacts to lives and property. The flood waters for, the, for these events will be extremely life-threatening situations, which have rapid rises, and we'll be including uh, flash flood emergency languages, uh, language within these warning messages. So why is this change being made? Well, across the National Weather Service, every year we issue about 4,000 flash flood warnings. And these cover a range of impacts on lives and property. Now, the user perception that we've been getting from based on feedback across the country is that the Weather Service has been over alerting for, for this hazard. So by using the change in, in uh, the wireless emergency alerts, we hope to improve the public response to flash flood warnings that are issued. And We'll be issuing these only for those events that require immediate life-saving action. So here's some examples of the new format. And this, the first example here is for your basic warning, your base level warning. The base level event will have no tag. And so that means again, on or after December 13th, there will be no weather or wireless emergency alert activation. The EAS system will still activate and you'll still get the crawlers on the TV and your radio system, uh, radio will have the cut in. What I'm showing here is the full flash flood warning. And I know it's a little small. I'll be zooming in to, uh, to highlight certain parts of this example. So here that's highlighted in yellow on the left side, you have your four, what we call bulleted statements that are uh, highlighted with the asterisk. They appear in the old version of the warning and they'll still appear but in the new version, between the third and the fourth bullet, we'll be inserting hazard source and impact information. The hazard part will tell you what's causing the flash flooding. The source identifies how we're getting the information or what we're basing it on. And the impact, which is what I really want you to focus on, is what the expected level of impact will be for this event. Now, once we get a more serious flash flood event, we'll be adding what's called the considerable level event tag. Your wireless emergency alert will be activating with the considerable tag 
And again, your EAS will, will also be activating. Now zooming in on the meat of the product, meat of the warning, notice that the impact will be identifying more significant and life-threatening uh, uh, information for this event, that we're expecting multiple road closures out of this type of event and potential uh, uh, landslides uh, that could be expected. Now, for the most serious impacts, most serious events, we would be adding the catastrophic level event tag. And in this case, again, your wireless emergency alert will be activated for your mobile phone and EAS will also be activated. And in this catastrophic type of uh, uh, product, on, on this level of event, we'll be adding flash flood emergency language in, in a couple of sections, one near the top, which is headlined, and then farther down within the bulleted statements, we'll be also adding the, the flash flood emergency uh, line in there. And then in the impact section, we'll be identifying that this is a very serious event that we're, we're talking about extremely dangerous conditions that are, are very much life-threatening and we're advising that you not attempt to travel unless you're trying to flee an area that's flooded or you're under an evacuation order. For the catastrophic tag, we are saving this level of event for these only for the most serious types of flash flooding situations, what we would call perhaps your top five worst of flooding events. So as far as example impacts, now for the base level event which does not have uh, a tag and will not uh, trigger your uh, wireless emergency alert, we're talking about events that would have, uh, you might have flooding on properties but it's just uh, deep ponding, we're not talking about extreme fast flowing uh, water, you might have some isolated road closures, or you might have a stream or river that's come, that's come out of bank, but it's not causing you know, significant threat to life and property. Um, you know, it could be an event where our radar or our rain gauges have detected heavy rain that may be causing a flash flood, or one of our stream or river gauges is, is showing a, a, a rise, significant rise in water level, and that it may be causing some flooding impacts, but we don't have any reports of that yet. Now, once we go to a considerable level event, here we're talking about reports of multiple road closures. We're, we're getting indications from emergency managers that evacuations are needed because of rising water and might have to, there might be some rescues from, from cars or homes and some significant roads or bridges that have been washed out. Now, for the catastrophic level tag, we're talking your most serious event. So we have multiple swift water rescues going on, homes destroyed by flooding, and widespread life-threatening situations. This could also mean uh, we would save this a catastrophic tag for total uh, failure of a significant dam. Now how I imagine a lot of these events to unfold is that most warnings will start off at a base level of event and then depending on, on the types of reports that we get from emergency managers or the police, for example, we would evolve it or upgrade it to a considerable or catastrophic level of event, just depending on the types of impacts that have been reported. Now here are some examples of different level of events that I've been talking about. So for your base level event, we're talking about just, you might have property inundation, like in this case, some homes have have been inundated by, by water, by deep ponding. You're not talking about fast flowing water here. And it's not an urgent situation requiring immediate rescue, but it's a significant event. But we, so in this case, we would call it a, a base level event. Now, once we're talking about more serious flooding, we would attach a considerable uh, tag to the warning. In this example, we have a case where Waihe'e stream and windward side of Oahu has overflowed significantly. It's gone over a property, caused quite a bit of property damage here. And then elsewhere in, during this event, we had multiple closures of Kamehameha Highway at Waikane and Waihole streams. And that also required uh, multiple rescues from vehicles that were stranded by the, the floodwaters. Now for your catastrophic event, a good example of this occurred recently, just last year, April 2018 in North Kauai. And with that record-breaking event, we had homes destroyed. 
We had widespread inundation going on and there was numerous, numerous people at risk from the floodwaters. So to summarize here, again, our, the Honolulu Forecast Office went to a new flash flood warning format and it's called the impact base warning format. Hopefully the new format will help users easily identify the different levels of event severity and associated impacts and will include machine readable tags that should help users and vendors develop apps and tools for the public and weather broadcasters to better communicate the different event severity levels. I believe that most warnings will start out at the base level, but then could evolve into the considerable or catastrophic level depending on the types of impacts that occurred during the event. And on or after December 16th of 2019, only the considerable and catastrophic level of events will activate the wireless emergency alerts on the mobile phones. Your EAS alerts will activate for all three levels. And you'll, so you'll still have the TV crawlers and the uh, radio cut-ins. So that's it. Uh, thanks for your time. Thanks for listening. And uh, if you have any questions, you can check out the email. Contact me by the email that you see on the screen, or you feel free to give me a call at the number shown. And again, thanks for listening, and have a good day.